Okay, so with what we're going to start off with first, um, students, everyone that entered. So we're just going to um, go through all the entries, speak a little bit about the dishes and give you a chance to explain uh, your philosophy, uh, a little bit about your dish. It can, it can be as brief as possible. You know, it doesn't need to be a presentation, just a little bit of background on your dish and, and some information about your dish. Um, and then I'm also going to pass it over to the judges to also give you some feedback on that dish, okay? Uh, and after that, we're going to announce the winners of the competition, okay? So the first dish, which was from Christy, so it was the Gimchi Potato Salad Delight. So thank you very much, Christy, for sending uh, your photos through, uh, your recipe card, your receipts, and your dish, and for entering the competition. Uh, would you like to give a, a little bit of background on your dish, or a little bit of philosophy about the dish? Um, yes, uh, thank you, Chef David. Um, my, I, I named it Kimchi Potato Salad Delight. Delight because um, it is something uh, unique. My, my ingredients are potato, which is sweet potato, um, the white potato, and also the sweet potato leaves. Um, and what I did, I, as per my recipe, I, I had steamed the sweet potato leaves um, and also <clears throat> um, boiled the, just in the right um, uh, texture for the white potato and the sweet potato. So I, I mixed it with a hero ingredient, which is the um, kimchi and the mayonnaise in a proportion, in a proportion where it will um, accentuate the kimchi. Um, and I designed it in a such a way that you can see the kimchi um, ingredient there. Yeah. And there is an accent there. Um, and very arranged in such a way um, to highlight the, the, the delight of using kimchi potato salad. Yeah, excellent. Thank you. Uh, judges, did you want to give some, um, some feedback and comments to Christy about the, the dish she's entered? <laughs> Yeah, I can start if you like, Christy. Thanks, Deb. Um, really like the colourful presentation of your dish there, Christy, and it's great to hear that you're being sustainable with your produce and using the leaves of your sweet potatoes. And I can just imagine that balance between the kimchi being sour and spicy with the sweet potatoes. So I think it's a really clever combination and to pair it with the beef sausages for some extra protein sounds really interesting. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. So uh, we'll go on to, yeah. Christy, I, uh, I thought this dish, uh, I would love to try it. It looks very healthy and colorful. And uh, like Deborah said, I like that you have used uh, all ingredients. Um, I just wanted to know, if, would you serve this as a uh, side dish, uh, a main or an entree? What, what, um, how would you serve this? This will be, uh, it can be on a side dish and an entree, but I consider this as an appetizer, the first base thing, because uh, it is something um, enticing. That's why I made it colorful. Um, it's not a main dish. It's, right. uh, mm -hmm. it's, I don't consider this as an appetizer. Well, it can be considered as an appetizer, but I find it something like a hero one when you when you serve it, it is a salad, like an entree to yes. enhance, uh, encourage people to, to have a very good appetite. Yeah, it's delightful. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Christy. Uh, so we'll go on to the next dish. So we have the gimchi fried rice with the tornado omelet by David. Uh, also, David made a seawater sort of um, cabbage and fruit inspired gimchi as well. So thanks very much, David, for doing two dishes and sending through your videos and recipes and receipts. Um, would, would the judges like to also give some, some input and some comments to David's dish? Yep, I can go first again if you like. Um, so. David, I think your omelette looked absolutely perfect. Um, I love omelettes, but as long as they're not overcooked and it looks like you've got the, the cooking of that omelette spot on. And I love the way that you did the, the tornado technique 
to lay it on top of your your fried rice it looks absolutely fantastic um i think again it will be very tasty but I, I like the contemporary presentation of that so well done david thank you uh well done david um how did you uh uh, uh with the cabbage with the sea water um that was very interesting so because i always tell my students when you um salt your cabbage i imagine uh, seawater so that was very clever i thought thank you yes i saw i, I read a little bit of history about uh, uh kimchi and apparently in the good old bad old days people used to leave their cabbages in the uh, in the sea and then go to work and then come back and pick them up so I thought it would be interesting to give us give it a give it a similar try. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I I found it very interesting. Thank you. Thank you, David. You didn't put him in Sydney Harbour, did you? No, definitely not. <laughs> 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 You're the second person no. to ask me that. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, maybe there's some cleaner parts of Sydney Harbour. Yeah, but no. Thanks very much, David. It was uh, it was excellent effort. Thanks for sending that through. I'm going to go on to the next dish. OK, so I'm not sure if Gagan's joined. I may have joined just then, but Gagan made a kimchi salad noodle. Uh, could I just check if uh, Gagan Sajev is in the room? Gagan, are you there? I didn't hear from him, so he might show in a little bit later. So I might just go on to the next dish. OK, so okay. we've got um, the salmon and kimchi tartare starter. So this is from Greta. So uh, beautiful dish, Greta. Thank you for sending through um, you. your recipe and your photos and your receipt as well. So thank you very much. Would you like to give a little bit of background and then your philosophy on this dish? Um, I absolutely adore um, Korean and Japanese uh, food. So I wanted to do a little bit of a fusion. Um, I also base the dish on being a um, cold starter on a hot summer's balmy night um, and um, the the sustainability of the, the salmon. And the, what the kimchi brought to it was that uh, the crunch, the spice and the sourness, um, which um, really... Uh, was toned down a little bit with the avocado. Yep. Beautiful, thank you. Um, yeah, those I, Sorry. I really like that that fusion combination as well. Um, and I, I just know that you know the Korean and the Japanese fusion work really well. And I think that you know just kind of like looking at the Japanese restaurants around Sydney, most of them seem to be run by Korean chefs anyway so it's a perfect marriage there so that that sounds delicious yes I, yes I also thought it was a perfect marriage between the Korean and the Japanese um, food combination um, and I like the idea I mean we have um, Koreans have uh, raw fish um, yep. uh, dipped in chili so oh. I don't know whether you knew that already. So so we could love the raw fish with uh, lots of spicy chili, in which yeah. case this is uh, kimchi. Uh, Greta, did you use um, well fermented kimchi or just uh, uh, what kind of kimchi did you use? Was it uh, the one that was delivered to me in the packet? Right. Yeah, so yeah. that that kimchi, Heather, that's more um, a fermented kimchi. So yeah, a lot yeah. of um, a lot of students gave some great feedback when they received the kimchi from um, Korean Cultural Center because it's already fermented. Some students liked having it uh, raw. Some liked um, having it cooked. So it was really interesting to hear the different uh, palates that the oh. students had working with kimchi. Yeah, yeah, I like the fem fermentation of it because it brought that sourness that the dish needed. Yeah, a bit of funk. Mm. Yep. No, it was a it was a very good looking dish. Um, mm. I definitely would have loved to uh, have eaten that. Thank you, Greta. Really good presentation, Greta. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so next dish. So we have the kimchi tofu cheesecake from Jun. So Jun, would you like to give uh, some background and your philosophy <laughs> about your recipe? 
Oh yes, uh, because I'm very good in cooking, so I make a <clears throat> dessert. Uh, first, you taste the is the tofu flavor, and then when you finish, you can feel after the taste, you can feel very light kimchi through your mouth. That is very light dessert for people who doesn't like very strong kimchi flavor. Uh, that's it. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Thank and th this is where all of us said we really wish that we could taste this yeah. because, you know, <laughs> as you say, you know, seeing the recipe and trying to work out those flavors <laughs> just from a recipe is quite difficult. So we really, really wanted to taste this one because it's very out there, definitely thought outside the box. Um, so well done for that. And your, your presentation was lovely too. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, June, uh, did you yes. did you mean to serve this as more of a dessert, a savory, or both, or oh, yeah. what were your concepts? Yes, yeah. the dessert. Dessert. Uh, it's cake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very light flavor. Yes, and yeah, uh, light tofu and kimchi flavor. It's so not very strong kimchi. Right. Yeah, and yeah. when you serve to afterwards, when you serve to uh, friends or family, what what were their uh, what did they say? What were their comments? Uh, they said is the tofu, the cake is very smooth, mm. and then the kimchi flavor is light. Uh, after the taste, the aftertaste is kimchi, light kimchi through your mouth. Mm -hmm. Not the tofu. Mm. Tofu is the first taste is tofu, and then aftertaste is light kimchi. There's two flavors. Right. I can opinion. imagine it being a, a great palate cleanser after a, a, a meal. Well done. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I, yes. I, I bet it was taste, uh, very delicious. Yeah. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. I, I also think your dish is so wonderful and beautiful. And I'm really curious about the flavor of your dish. <laughs> 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 you did you. a very it's good job. Flavor. Yeah. What's the biscuit base, Jun? Uh, that's can I ask? Jokon. You can use uh, whatever you like. You can use cake, biscuit, okay. or, or any dequa. You can, whatever you want. Okay, excellent. Thank you, Jun, for sending through. Thank you. Thank you. So, Ayong, I'm just going to hand it over to you now, if that's okay. Okay, thank you, John. So the next dish we have is the kimchi chicken lollipop from Larani. So Larani, thanks for uh, handing this one in with your recipes and receipts and all your great photos. Would you like to give some um, some background and your philosophy on your recipe and dish? Okay, yes, Chef. Um, I chose this um, recipe because the weather outside during that day I was cooking was pretty hot. So I needed to come up with a recipe that has some preservative like vinegar so that it doesn't spoil easily in the hot weather. And it has to be a simple common meat, which is chicken, I believe. It's very common. A lot of people can relate to it. And also that uh, the, the recipe should be a bit simple so that whoever eats it, it say, oh yeah, I can relate to chicken and vinegar plus the kimchi, of course. So I use kimchi juice i just squeezed the um the kimchi that was given to us delivered to us by the uh korean cultural center thank you very much because that was a lifesaver for me <laughs> and then um i also decided that if if because this recipe is a bit simple and um it's a common meat and and i'm not korean korean dish is really foreign to me because <laughs> of the chili mm -hmm. um uh, level. So I decided to make sure that I have kimchi in different um, textures. For example, the marination of the chicken had uh, kimchi juice. Then I made a rice, uh, 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 what do you call this, a uh, rice paper bowl, which is you dip the rice paper with kimchi uh, kimchi juice and the, the, the chili pepper and the gochujang, which is also new to me. And uh, you have to try it. So that was another process level. And then also I, I had to make something that's similar to what David, Chef David showed to us the day before we he on the same day that he told us, I think, or the day before he told us that there's going to be a competition. I made I saw him watch uh, watched him make the fried rice with with uh, the crispy uh, kimchi um, 
crispy chick, uh, cream, sorry, I'm nervous. <laughs> the crispy kimchi um, uh, that he made on, and put on top his fried rice. So I said, oh, I better put that on because, uh, you know, it's relating, I can relate to that. So I put it at the bottom of the, of the green platter. And then um, I also had to put some fresh kimchi at the side as a, as a uh, like a rolled uh, design just to add its color. And then I wanted to put some chili to say that you can have it as hot as you want. You can add the hot, the, you know, you can eat with your meal with the han, Habana chili and also the other long chili, red chili. So it's up to you if you're a chili person. If you're not, then you just put it aside. And I can also made this um, boiled steamed rice with a bit of brown brown rice in it. So you can see a little bit of mapping uh, if you can see it, if it's, if it's obvious in the photo. Plus I needed to put um, uh, sesame seeds, so the roasted one, so that it adds a bit of texture, crunch and flavor to the ordinary steamed rice. So I, I, I also said that I have to plate it nicely enough so that um, this, this hopefully simple dish, I think, is um, enough to be enticing. So I put it in, in a towering uh, presentation where the lollipop chicken is on top and then the, followed by the rice paper bowl that catches it. And then underneath is the rice bowl, steam rice bowl with um, sesame seed. And then you've got the rib, the uh, spring, spring onions cut into strips so that it can curl, where you have to dip it in cold chilled water so that it can curl. It doesn't fall apart. It's not too heavy, not too thin. And also if for the people who want more sauce, you can put the sauce on it. It's optional for you guys. And I put a, it put extra chili on that again. So that if you don't like chili, you don't have to have the sauce. Uh, I think that pretty much um, uh, sums it up. M my thing is, um, I learned a lot doing this because I <laughs> this is Sounds as though you did, Lana. You did a fantastic job. Were you able to put the picture back up, uh, David? Um, yeah, Lana, as you say, you know, we everyone does eat with their eyes and the presentation for this dish is outstanding. Um, and I think, you know, if if you ever wanted a career out of the outside of the kitchen, you could definitely be on the floor as well because your description of that dish was as per your recipe. And I think anybody that heard your description would be very enticed to eat it so yeah very well done oh thank you so much that means a lot to me i thought uh lani that you could uh serve this in a restaurant and be quite you know people would be quite pleased oh my uh, god that's yeah, so great tasting. um yes and and you know it, it it's very exotic and uh but it it speaks korean with all the kimchi my question is um with, with um, marinating it in uh, kimchi juice, uh, when you were frying the chicken, um, how? What were your thoughts? Did it burn in any way, or were you able to not burn the chicken? Yeah, yeah. I had to um, test it first with two drums, uh, two lollipops. I said, "This is okay. These are my ugliest lollipops. I'll test it first with the hot oil, really hot, and it did burn quickly. So I said, "Oh no, this is not going to work." So I put the next batch, and I put it very, very low heat, so that it it gradually cooked it, and then I and then I increased it towards the end, and then I opened up the lollipop and made sure that it was cooked inside. So I timed it, and it worked that way. So it had to be very like it's hot but not like extremely hot oil it has to be really slow so it took a longer to fry it thank you it's beautiful it's a beautiful looking dish thank you so much <laughs> cool thanks Lani. thank you so next dish we have the crackling shoe pastry with a kimchi spinach salad and sesame i'm not sure if Leanne has entered the room. I know she's working today and she said she'll try and join on her break. Are you in the room at the moment, Leanne? I don't think she is. I can always bring it back if she joins a little bit later. We might move on to the next recipe and dish. So we have the kimchi and pork meatball stew with fried tofu, kale and cheese. And this is from Misuk, so thank you very much me Sook, for sending through your recipe and your pictures and your video as well appreciate it would you like to give a little bit of a um, spiel and philosophy about your dish 
Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I'd like to happy to introduce these dishes. Um, this kind of uh, my philosophy is like uh, all the dishes should be making easy and simple, but um, not lose uh, kimchi original flavor as well. So I'd like to try to combination of kimchi flavor with other like a cheese and some kale and uh, fried tofu. So this gonna be it's kind of stew with uh, as a main meal. This for the two people. So uh, it's winter time. You can enjoy boiling and eating together. It's kind of hot pot. And then I use uh, some um, the cabbage roll with uh, meat, uh, pork mince and some tofu and green shallot. And it's kind of a, like a, a mandu in Korea. So uh, probably the, the uh, cook. It's not cook. I cook simply cooked in the microwave. The one minute with the kimchi leaf, uh, not kimchi. Uh, the cap <laughs> sorry, I'm I'm really nervous. <laughs> Let me just calm down. Uh, I use the Chinese cabbage, the Wombok cabbage leaf for the wrapping of the meatball. And then uh, all the uh, cabbage, um, uh, rest of part I put it underneath of the stew, so it's not burned. Then I use with the uh, beef bone stew. So once boiled up, it's like a mild taste with the stew. You can taste the kimchi flavor as well. So I use a cheese which reduces the sourness of kimchi, but still have a, you can taste the kimchi as well. So the, the fried tofu gave give more like a more a one boiler fried tofu can be a more bigger. So you can have a like a, a full meal. It's a full meal. Oh, so let me, <laughs> I'm nervous that it'll be hard to explain okay. to you. Yeah, Thanks, Misa. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. So you can have um, a, like a, a protein as well. You can use uh, I use a pork meat, so you can have protein on uh, deep fried tofu and cheese and kale of lots of vitamins and kimchi uh, come from lots of vitamins as well. So good combination of nutrition as well. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. Thank you. That Thank sounds you. great, Misuk. I like I like your um, explanation about how healthy that it is is because it certainly looks healthy you know the vibrant greens of your cabbage <clears throat> and your lovely neat presentation um with a little bit of extra naughtiness from that slice of cheese it, that that's <laughs> everything tastes better with cheese in my opinion um but now that looks a really um presentable professional dish and i'm sure that that stock that you've made there would be absolutely delicious with the subtle flavors of the kimchi going through it so well done thank you um, so yeah, that was a uh, really clever dish with you know pork and kimchi, pork and cabbage. What can you go wrong? <laughs> yeah, um, you know it's a it's a good use of uh, those two ingredients, and it just looks so healthy and and it invites you to eat. So thank you. You're welcome. Cool. Thank you, Miss. So we'll go on to the next dish. So Owen couldn't make it today because he's working, but he produced a slow cook pork soft bones marinated in soybean paste with kimchi. Um, so this was another great looking dish, but I think it had a lot of flavor um, and a lot of characteristics to the spices he used. Okay, this is just his recipe here. So he's had a little bit of Chinese influence and mixed that with a bit of Korean influence as well in his recipe. And the next dish we have is the Kang Som Gimchi with prawn from Paula. So, Penshuri, would you like to um, give a little bit of philosophy and background on your dish? And um, thank you very much for the great video you sent through and then your and your pictures and your receipts as well. <laughs> thank you, Chef. Is it the, uh, this, this food did start from I need to finish my kimchi before they expire? And then the taste, uh, the taste is similar in the Thai food they call gangsong. And I just uh, change to put in the sour curry Thai paste. And then they're working good when I try the first time. And then uh, when the chef say they have the kimchi to do some like a Korea center. And then I just try to do uh, again because I'm. Um, um, I love this food and they can clear when you when you have some they can clear your mood like a waste and they taste uh, they taste amazing on me the first taste they are sour 
and sweet and turn turn to salty a little bit. But normally I I'm, I cook today, but I'm not eat after that. I have to leave and then eat the next day. They're more tasty. Mm. Really good point there. Can you go back to the picture, please, Aryong? Just want to see that dish again. Um, and Paula, you did a really good description there because you know when we're doing this online competing and even when you watch a cooking show on TV or on the internet, it's really important that you explain your flavours. So thank you for explaining those flavours to us. I think we can kind of like imagine the taste mm -hmm. of the beautiful prawns um, with those um, ingredients, you know, with the palm sugar being a bit sweeter and the, the kimchi being, you know, sour and, and spicy. So I think you've made a really good description there. I want to say a big shout out to you for wearing your chef whites at home in your kitchen. <laughs> and, and pairing them with your koala slippers. I think that, that's a really good look. So you just definitely gave me a laugh there. So I think if everyone looked closely at Paula's picture there, you can see her very impressive footwear. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, this was another dish. I really wanted to try it in Suri because um, Koreans uh, have a kimchi soup. We can have kimchi stew, but we also have a very light kimchi soup. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was great that you've uh, you know tried to marry the Thai and the kim and kimchi together in soup. So mm -hmm. I thought it was a great use of kimchi. So yeah, I'm sure it would taste uh, even better the next day. <laughs> thank but, you. Yeah, thank you, Paula. Thanks, Paula. Well, uh, it looks very simple, but your um, recipe it looks very yummy. Also, um, I in Korea, many Koreans enjoy Thai food so much, and because uh, Thai food and Korean food have some common things, um, I think. So I think Thai, your Thai style food and um, kimchi will be very har harmonious. I want to taste it. Thank you. Thanks, Paula. So next dish is the kimchi pork tenderloin soup by Shio. So again, thank you very much, Shio, for sending not only your photos and receipts and recipe through, but also your great videos. Um, it was great to watch those and, and get an idea about uh, your philosophy and your cooking skills. It was great to see. Would, would you like to give a little bit of a um, background on the dish and your philosophy towards creating this dish, please? Uh, yes, Chef. Hi, everyone. Um, this uh, this dish I got inspired by the traditional uh, Korean beef soup. Um, here I want to uh, here I change this uh, meal a uh, meat to pork tenderloin because it's more tender, and um. I want to enhance the kimchi uh, flavor, like the spiciness and 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 the, the sourness. Um, I don't want to lose it, so I fried it. Uh, I fried the the kimchi and 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 the uh, chili paste. Uh, then in this dish, I have um, uh, rice noodles, uh, tofu, mushroom. And the uh, snow snow pea snow pea spot snow pea spots. So it's very nutritious. Cool. And then also, Shio, and you also produced two great dishes. They also sent through and made the kimchi bacon and cheese fried rice. So thanks for making the effort to do two um, two dishes to enter. Did you want to go a quick brief through about this dish? For everybody. Uh, yes. Uh, in uh, in this one, I I I I I use the um. <laughs> sorry, I'm very it's nervous. Okay. It's all right. Uh, in this dish, I use um bacon, um kimchi, um. And you know, I fry, I I fry the onion. I fry the bacon, onion, and and the kimchi chili paste, uh, because uh, I think they are good 
a combination of flavors, uh, then uh, and cheese and seaweeds, then uh, mix them, mix them. Uh, <laughs> it's it's all about the flavor. Mm, I can just Great. taste those flavors yeah. and just looking yeah. at those flavors, Shyong. I just I can taste that bacon and that cheese right now. So mm -hmm. I think that the the two dishes look absolutely fantastic. And I have a local Korean fried chicken shop. I think every suburb has a Korean fried chicken shop these days, um, and they do have cheese fried rice on the menu. But every time I go to order it, they've always run out. So I think it's a very popular dish. Um, and as I said before, everything tastes better with cheese. So that looks absolutely stunning. I do want to shout out here to you for the professional formatting of your standard recipe cards here. They look very easy to follow and very professional. So well done for that as well as your beautiful dishes. Thank you. Yes, I wanted to congratulate you on your beautiful presentation of the recipe. It just looks quite professional, um, you know, professional recipe card. Um, and also, I think you know Korean food quite well. I think I just oh, have yeah. a, a yes, feeling. Yes, I love Korean food. Um, I, I, used to, I used to go to Korean restaurant a lot. And because I'm, uh, I'm a Sichuan China, I'm, a, I'm living in Sichuan area, uh, we also like spicy food. Like um, and we also do lots of pickled the veggies, so uh, our eating habits it's like similar. Yes, I can tell that you know you're trying to uh, make your own version of very popular Korean uh, dishes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anna. Okay, so we'll go on to the next. And this is from Vince. So thanks for sending us through, Vince. So it's an international breakfast Korean style. So Korean bacon and eggs. So uh, Vince sent through some great photos and his recipe cards as well. Uh, Vince, would you like to give a little bit of a, a spiel about the philosophy and the ideas behind your your recipe and dish? Yeah, sure. Um, because it was um, a competition by the Korean Cultural Center to increase cultural awareness, um, I had it in my mind, perhaps the best way to do that, especially through food, would be to present people with something that they were familiar with and to introduce kimchi in that dish. So, um, kimchi goes particularly well with pork, um, and especially if you have it with noodles. So I thought of, well, is there some way we could sort of marry um, traditional European bacon then eggs breakfast to more of a sort of Korean um, or to rather bring kimchi into something like a bacon and eggs breakfast. So that's the context, an East East West breakfast. I saw on the internet lots of videos kimchi fried rice so and kimchi noodles which already had eggs and bacon in them so i thought well perhaps if we can keep it more separate like a bacon and egg breakfast more in the style of how you would make a nasi goreng or a nasi lemak or a salad niçoise um then able to recognize it as a bacon and egg breakfast perhaps order it if they would normally for the kimchi um, then try to bring the kimchi into the dish to try and bring the ingredients together so we came up with the idea of cr creating a sauce which was made of just complements to, to the elements on the plate so tomato ketchup, Maple syrup would go with the bacon. Um, the other point as well was to Korea it's rice based rather than wheat based. It's the bacon and egg for breakfast. You're going to be having bread butter or toast. So the start for this meal needed to be rice. 
again, I thought, what's the most familiar rice that, or what rice dish are Europeans most familiar with? It could have just been plain boiled rice, but they're probably also very familiar with Cantonese egg fried rice. So I thought that would be a bit more flavorful for them, which would marry better with the stronger taste of the kimchi and the bacon. So I thought, how can we marry all of these three together? There was the tomato ketchup, the um, syrup, uh, light soy sauce for the saltiness, which would go well with the egg fried rice. And I thought flavor was kimchi well, and a garlic in a chili sauce, Chinese garlic and chili sauce. So I just put those in equal quantities, and it tasted fantastic. Mm. Way to all the individual elements of the plate. It, once you taste that sauce with the bacon, it sort of prepared the palate then for tasting egg fried rice and tasting kimchi and appreciating that. Mm, sounds, sounds lovely, Vince. And I really want to commend you on the effort that you put into explaining your creativity as part of your submission. Um, so thank you for doing all of that research. It sounds as though you have really looked into those different flavour combinations and, and, and how different cuisines kind of like eat, especially breakfast. And as you say, you know, for me, originally coming from England, my my breakfast was toast or porridge. So, you know, it's, uh, or a, a, a full English breakfast with the eggs and, and bacon. So I think it's something that most people would recognise. And to put the kimchi, you know, with that, with the rice and as a side dish, I think it's a really good introduction for people that have never had it before. So thank you for that. Thank you. Yeah, I thought Vincent, your you, I thought you really thought about it. It was actually very clever and a great understanding of kimchi. Um, you know, I travel when I travel around the world. I wish all my plates look like that because I'm like always trying to look for kimchi, and you know, and kimchi actually makes most things taste nicer. Yep. Uh, and I love the your recipe card where how you've. Um, said oh you prefer the fresh kimchi over the cooked kimchi with your dish and I, and it was very well thought out i thought it was um you know you thought about it and it really shows thank you vincent thank you and, and vincent another call out to that lovely coffee that you've got there the three layer did you do that yourself <laughs> yes <laughs> fantastic <laughs> it's the vietnamese coffee isn't it vince um yeah it's uh, that one is actually a leche leche, which is a Spanish version. You put the um, condensed milk in first, then you gently pour in the coffee, and then you froth some milk, some uh, warmed milk, and then you just pour that over a spoon on top of the coffee. So that, that produces the other three layers then. Mm. And then you just stir it, and then it just looks like a Vietnamese coffee. I think I think Vince, if I eat that breakfast, I think it will. I'd be running a hundred miles an hour for the rest of the day. Yes. <laughs> Excellent, very sweet. Thank you. So we'll go on to our next. So this is by Yasmin. So it's a kimchi chicken curry with green chili and red radish. So Yasmin did a couple of dishes. So thank you very much for sending in through those recipes and receipts and great photos. Yasmin, would you like to also explain your philosophy and ideas about your recipe? Uh, hi all, my name is Yasmin. Uh, frankly speaking, I have not tasted much of Korean food, but about the Korean food, I know only one thing, which is kimchi. So even in India, I tasted kimchi, but not the Korean food. So it was early, it was very difficult for me. I was literally took two to three days to thinking what to make because I know only cooking and baking and most of my cooking is Indian, Indian cooking. And Indian cooking, which is really very spicy, very so many spices, so many herbs. And Korean cuisine is very simple. They use less of, uh, less of oil, it's more, spicy uh, kimchi is the main part so i thought you know because kimchi is sour sweet and spicy why i can't use this as a you know binding of my all dishes 
so when i made chicken uh, i took a inspiration from uh, a nagaland chicken curry uh, nagaland is a part of india it's in the eastern side which again is a very different style of cooking from the rest of the india they cook very similarly like a chinese japanese and the korean they use more of soy sauce less of spice more of pork and uh, sausages so i thought to use that and because the uh, kimchi is spicy i thought to mix two dishes uh, again the pickle chicken and the nagaland chicken so it was a fusion for me so that's why the dish contain uh, the green chili uh, i made the sauce with the kimchi paste uh, i stuffed the green chili with the kimchi so when i tasted my chicken it was really giving me a nice flavor and texture of the kimchi i also added a, a green uh, sorry red radish just to give a crunch and to balance the whole dish and also added a fried chicken skin so it was a full of texture i tasted most of uh, uh, kimchi uh, protein was the uh, main part chicken i liked the chicken so me and my husband we liked the chicken and my second dish was uh, the jhal muri uh, which is again it, this got inspired from the indian dish it's a street food uh, usually find in kolkata uh, they put so many onions and radish it's a very sweet so, uh, spicy and tangy so because kimchi has all those flavor i thought to use kimchi uh, in my jhal muri and again it gave the nice flavor and texture to me which was really very similar to jhal muri nobody has even if a typical indian person who have tried the jhal muri he would have not been disappointed with this jhal muri fantastic yasmin thank you so much for that description and it was very thorough and i think you've absolutely nailed it when we talk about fusions so in australia we're very multicultural as you know and there are lots of cuisines that go together and sometimes often those cuisines shouldn't go together unless the chefs actually do what you've done is actually analyze the flavors of the ingredients and marry those with similar flavors in other cuisines that's the way that it works so thank you for explaining your rationale on why you put those flavors together um, and you know indian cuisine is a, a fantastic cuisine and you know like, like french cuisine there's so many different regions and so many different styles and spices and commodities within those different regions um, as in every other country and it was really interesting to hear where you got that inspiration from um, really like the presentation of your your rice dish absolutely fine and your chicken looked delicious as well so thank you for explaining that really lovely thank you yes um yes man and um this is uh looks delicious i'd love to um try your uh jal moody um what is really um you're very clever cook is that your dishes are all indian uh yet the ingredients are korean so i mean and it's a great marriage of the two cuisine and um koreans love kimchi and rice and noodles so and um, you've combined all of that uh in an indian uh way so it's a great looking dishes or thank you thank you thank you so much thank you Yes, I mean, I thought you, I thought you knew about Korean dish very, very well. Mm -hmm. I love your idea using pepper as your kimchi container. Mm -hmm. It looks very good and amazing. <laughs> thank you for your effort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Cool. Thank you, Yasmin. And that is the last one. Okay. So if I was talented, I'd probably play a drum roll, but I can't play any musical mm -hmm. instruments besides a cowbell and a triangle. So um, I'd like to, we're going to announce the winners. So I would like to hand over to our judges. So Heather will be announcing the third winner, Deborah the second winner, and Jin He will be announcing the first winner. Okay, the first place. So if I could hand that over to you, Heather, that would be great. Yes. 
Uh, well, all the students, thank you so much. Um, although we can only give prizes to three students, uh, everyone did such a great job and it was very difficult. All of us, we found it so hard. And you guys are so talented. And uh, one of these days, I'd love to try every single one of your dishes. But um, I'm going to do a difficult job of just announcing the third prize winner. And that goes to Jun Lau. Thank you. Awesome. The kimchi tofu cheesecake. Congratulations, Thank you, Jun. Yeah, I wish we could taste that. Uh, uh, like you just made it so elegant and, and look simple and so refined looking uh, that you use kimchi and tofu, which is uh, one of these two marriage in heaven uh, ingredients. So thank, thank you. you. I will make a tofu cheesecake for the class for the first day we are, when I come to taste, for everyone thank to you, taste. Oh, looking amazing. forward to that, Jun. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Because I'm Thanks here on campus, so I can try it. <laughs> <laughs> on next Friday, I think it's on next Friday. Fantastic. I look forward to it. Excellent. So um, it's over to me to announce yes. the second prize. Yep. Thank you. Okay, so again, Definitely. I'm just going to um, say the same thing as Heather. You know, thank you for entering the competition. It wasn't how we envisioned it envisioned it to be we expected you to be cooking your dishes so well done for you for actually entering and cooking from home and getting yourselves organized and submitting all of your recipes and your videos because i know that takes a lot so thank you so much and i really enjoyed looking at all of your dishes but the second prize goes to the kimchi chicken lollipop and the rice paper bowl by lani well done Congratulations, Lani. Oh, thank you so much. That means so much to me. Oh, Lani, it was such a spectacular looking dish That's that great. before you even looked at the recipe, you just wanted to eat it, you know, and I really like the use of that, the rice paper. I've seen rice paper floating around quite a bit. Well, not actually floating around, but used in lots of other things. It's been used on a lot of cakes at the moment. So a lot of patisserie chefs are actually colouring it and flavouring it with some sugar water and drying it in the oven. So I've seen it on cakes, but I've not seen it like this before. So really well done. Fantastic looking dish. I'm sure it tastes as amazing as it looks. Well done. Thank you so much. But just to give you an idea, what gave me the strength to carry on is because I based it on a Filipino chicken adobo. Ah, interesting. Yeah, because Korean is foreign to me dish. Uh, I, I, I'm not very good with uh, chili food, only mild ones. Yeah. So how am I going to taste it when I don't even, you know, eat Korean cuisine probably once a year? That's the, the most. And, and I said, I have to base it with what I knew. So I use, we, we do a lot of chicken adobo. So I said, might as well use kimchi, which is, I love kimchi now. I, to me, it was fun. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think that was another aim of the Korean Cultural Centre to get everyone a bit more educated around kimchi. So myself, I'd, I'd never really tasted kimchi until a couple of years ago. Um, but now, like you, I'm addicted. So thank you so much. Thank you. And Jinhee? Yes. Um, first of all, thank you for participating in this contest. Um, kimchi is the comfort food and identity of Koreans. So um, when I when you think of kimchi, many kinds of kimchi dishes come to our mind. But I saw today completely new kimchi dishes this time, and I was really, really surprised at your creativity. And it was so impressive that there were many combinations of kimchi and cuisines from other countries. So that uh, if I give some advice as a Korean, kimchi has a very different taste and ways of eating, depending on the ingredients and the storage period. So, um, if you are interested in kimchi, uh, you can try various ingredients such as cucumber, radish, and spring onion, etc., and very storage um, periods. I think today's ranking is not so, doesn't matter so much 
because I couldn't uh, taste your food. So the ranking can be um, can can be changed if I taste your food. <laughs> And all of your dishes were the best. And I'm really, really thankful for your challenge. And so the first prize goes to kimchi chicken curry with green chili and red radish by Yasmin. Congratulations. Oh my god, I really can't. <laughs> I won this competition. My husband was saying, I don't know, you know. It's a very difficult to mix two different cuisine. I don't know how it will turn. And I was, when he was giving me feedback, I was so, so nervous and so embarrassed that really, I was asking 10 times that, are you really saying that this is not tasty? He said, no, no, I don't know, I don't know. And when he tried, I asked, you know, how, what, uh, how was it? He said, I finished all the dish. But I thought, you know, because he's my husband, he's saying that, but I'm so happy I want this. Yeah, well done, Yasmin. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think you've try, uh, started a new trend, Indian and Korean. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Well done, Yasmin. And thank you also thank you to everybody that entered. It's the, I know it's not easy, especially coming out of um, being in a lockdown for so long and not having the chance to be in the kitchens or workplaces and cooking. And I know it would have taken a lot of um, inspiration, a lot of bravery to enter an online competition, especially where the judges can't taste your food. But hopefully we can run this again next year in the kitchens and you can all um, get to cook your dish and all the great judges that we had today um, can taste your dishes. But I'm just really thankful for everyone um, you know, for entering the competition, especially during these strange, weird times. I'm looking forward to seeing all the students back in the kitchens next week in our lessons. And I'd also a big special thank you to Deborah um, and also to Ayong, Jihee and Heather for being our guests and also helping out with the online cooking competition. It was a new experience for me as well. And a special thank you also to Kylie for helping out with the filming and doing the IT setup. I think we all learned how to yeah. do a live masterclass via Microsoft Teams. So it was a great learning experience. And yeah, just a really big thank you from all the students that entered. I really appreciate it. I just want to say a big shout out to David um, for doing a, such a fantastic masterclass and pulling all of this together. I know he spent quite a lot of time uploading your photos and videos because they came in many different formats. So as he said, he um, he has he has learned from this experience as well, mainly IT. Um, but you know, it was really I was really impressed seeing him in the masterclass with the kimchi. I learned a lot, and I was lucky enough that I actually got to taste the dishes as well. Um, so I feel very fortunate. So a big thank you to David, and also a massive um, thank you to the Korean Cultural Centre for you know working with us and partnering with us here at Ride Tape in our Asian cookery class, um, our Asian cookery course. And we're really looking forward to this partnership going through into the future and doing some more events together. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you. Thanks, Deborah. Thank you. Cool. Ayong, would you like to take over or would you like to add anything? Oh, no, I'm good. Um, can you hear me? Yes, we <laughs> yeah. can hear. It sounds good now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so um, I'm good. I'm really glad everyone. Um, I am really would like to be thankful for everyone uh, for um, submitting really great work. And I'm absolutely happy to um, see your voice and then um, voice to be um, amazed by uh, the result. Uh, I hope you can keep um, trying something new with Korean food and then try different kimchi that you didn't try this time. And thank you so much. Cool. Thanks, Ayan. Cool. Thank you all. Thanks to our judges. Thanks to all the students that, uh, that, that joined and logged in today. And I look forward to seeing you all back next week. I'm sure you'll have plenty of questions and answers, but also I look forward to trying all your food, hopefully in the near future for the dishes you cooked. So thank you very much. Well done, everyone. Look forward cool. to seeing thank you next you. week. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Well done, everyone. Thank you.